Hello and welcome to Knowing Nature Minecraft Edition. In this video we're going to be learning all about the coral reef biome in Minecraft and look at what it can teach us about coral reefs in real life. Uh, let's get started. So here we are, we're at a vanilla coral reef biome here in Minecraft. Now, despite all the variation and color that they've added in coral reefs, um, I think we could do something to make coral reefs a little bit more realistic. Uh, but first, I think we should get to know some of the biology of coral, uh, because that really can inform how we build our better coral reefs. Behind me here, I've got a bit of coral, and we've put it behind this big magnifier so that we can see uh, what it looks like up close. Now, when you look really closely at a piece of coral, you'll see that it's not made up of one creature. It's actually a whole colony of different little creatures called polyps. Those are those yellow tentacly things behind me. Now, polyps are really neat little organisms. They are able to take in dissolved uh, calcium and carbon from the water, and they can turn it into a sort of limestone, which they use to build up their little homes. So the little animal will build up a little home and it sits inside a hole that it can use to protect itself with. It can tuck its tentacles down inside and hide in this really hard limestone shell. Now, after the coral polyp dies, other polyps can, of course, move in on top of them, and they'll add their own little limestone home on top of it. And that's how coral reefs gradually grow up over time. But I think what we should do now is take a little bit of a closer look at a single polyp uh, because they are super cool. So here's a giant polyp that I've built, and I've also cut it in half so we can see inside. Up at the top, we've got all those tentacles, and polyps can have loads of different tentacles. They can have, uh, some have eight, some will have like up to hundreds of tentacles, so they can come in a lot of different varieties depending on the species. Uh, down here, the yellow glass here, the stained glass, that's the main body of the polyp, and you can see here the, the uh, dead coral blocks I'm using as that limestone skeleton that the polyp builds up around itself. And you can see that the body of the polyp actually comes up and over and is also around the outside of the skeleton. And because it stretches around outside and on either side and all the way around it, of course, you would have um, other polyps. And that means that they're actually touching, their bodies actually touch, and we'll talk about why that's important in a moment. Um, the limestone skeleton there is there again for protection, and that means that if something comes by that might want to eat it, it can take those tentacles and tuck them down inside there to keep itself a bit safe. Uh, in the middle, we've got the mouth of the polyp, and in this case, we're using hoppers here because, of course, the mouth is for taking things in. And they go into the furnace here, which is the stomach of the polyp. And this minecart system we'll talk about in a moment. So what does our giant polyp eat? Well, they eat plankton that float around in the water. And uh, I think what we should do is feed our giant polyp here. So in the chest, I've got some coral food. We've got some cod to represent um, animal plankton, zooplankton. Uh, I've got bamboo, which we're going to use as our fuel. And I'll talk about why in a moment. Uh, we're going to use kelp to represent our um, algae, our floating plant plankton. And we've got some slime blocks, just as building blocks so I can get up to its mouth. So let's feed our polyp here. Um, and I think what we'll do is we will feed it some, some zooplankton. So let's toss them into the mouth there. And of course, it would be the tentacles that pass the food down. Okay, so now... Our polyp has some food in its stomach, uh, but of course, all animals need energy in order to digest their food. So we're going to put our bamboo here as fuel, and now our polyp's digesting. Excellent. We've we fed our little coral here. So what's the deal with this hopper and minecart? No, this is not how our polyp goes to the bathroom, because in real life, of course, down at the bottom here would be all solid limestone. Um, because that's the, the polyp, the dead polyp, that this polyp would have sat on top of. So it would be all limestone down here. So where do they go to the toilet? Well, actually, they need to poop out their mouth, because they've got no other holes. So what's the deal with this minecart? Well, 
polyps and corals are super cool because they're not just these single individual animals because their membranes their bodies touch other polyps that would be living next to them they can actually pass food to other polyps which is super cool um, so if they want to you know if their neighbors a little bit hungry what they can do is they can take some of the nutrients and they can send it off to their neighbors so they can share so corals are made up of these individual polyps but they can share these different nutrients and so they're kind of like super organisms that all work together to keep the whole colony alive and i think that is pretty amazing so behind me here i've taken a tentacle from a polyp and we've magnified it even more and when you're at this level of magnification you can see that the polyp is actually mostly transparent and it only has these little dots of color inside it now what are these little dots they are actually a type of algae called zooxanthellae uh, let's go up and take a closer look so zooxanthellae they live inside the body of these coral polyps and again they're a type of algae so they're a type of plants and like most plants they can do something called photosynthesis that's where they take sunlight and carbon dioxide and they put them together and they make sugars and that's why i wanted to use bamboo in the stomach of our giant polyp back there um, because it looks kind of like sugar cane because most animals they use sugars as their energy source but of course in minecraft we can't use sugar cane as fuel we have to use bamboo uh, to kind of look like sugar cane so the algae they live inside and in exchange for living inside the polyp the algae they actually give the polyp the sugars that they make they keep a little bit for themselves but they can give other sugars to the polyp and that helps the polyp get its energy so what do the algae get out of this well remember that the polyp is an animal that means it takes in oxygen when it breathes and it breathes out carbon dioxide and some of these algae will actually take in some of that carbon dioxide that the animal is making inside it and remember they're plants so when they take in carbon dioxide they put out oxygen so it helps our our polyp breathe even uh, the other thing is that when the polyp eats and gets its nutrients some of those nutrients can go into the algae inside of its body so the algae are getting a little bit of food from the polyp and then the last thing is that the polyp actually provides the algae with protection because remember there's that limestone skeleton so when these tentacles get pulled into the skeleton that protects the animal but it also protects the algae uh, and of course the tentacles are also responsible for catching food and that's because they have special stinging cells on the outside so i've got some stinging cells here which we're going to use so uh, remember the tentacles they're responsible for catching food and they can also sting so we're going to use uh, the sticky piston to show catching food and we're going to use this uh, slime block here to represent a, a little floating piece of uh, plankton that this tentacle is going to catch uh, but there's stinging cells because if it's a zooplankton if it's a tiny microscopic animal it needs to sting that animal uh, to disable it to stun it um, so it doesn't just swim away so we're going to use this dispenser here we're going to put some stinging cells inside and now our tentacle here is going to catch its its plankton prey so there's a bit of plankton floating by the tentacle is going to feel it it's going to sense that motion in the water and it's going to sting it and pull it in and of course that piece of algae is now going to move down into the mouth now because the tentacle has these stinging cells that's another form of protection because you don't really want to brush up against one of these coral polyps uh, because it can sting you if you're a predator so our algae gets something from the polyp it gets a safe home it gets a little bit of food it gets some carbon dioxide and the polyp gets something from the algae it gets that sugar as an energy source and it gets a little bit of oxygen so they work together they are symbiotic their relationship so how does all this biology help us build better corals in minecraft well i'll show you 
So the first one I've got here are the branching corals, and they're the most similar to the vanilla corals, but what I've done is I've added a few extra branches that come off in different directions, and it makes them a little bit more tree-like, like we'd find in branching corals in real life. Now, why is it that they look like trees a little bit? Well, remember that these corals, they've got these algae inside them that need sunlight. And so by spreading out as they go upwards, it means that more of the polyps can catch sunlight. They're not shading each other out. So that's, I've tried to keep that in mind when I'm building it, that all these polyps, they want to stretch out to the sunlight. So the next group of corals are a bit shorter than the branching corals. These are the digitate or finger-like corals. And these ones, they take these kind of finger-like shapes here. And sometimes they're low and flat with lots of spikes that come out. Uh, sometimes they can grow into more like a fan shape like this. So I've tried to make it look a little bit fan shaped here. The next group are the more massive corals. These are ones that grow in one big chunk. So you've got smaller bubble corals that tend to form slightly smaller colonies. And of course we've got bigger, this one I've tried to make more like a brain coral where they're just one big lump. Brain corals don't normally have spaces where you can go inside them. They're just one big dome. Um, but sometimes they can actually be on these short stalks here. And I've used dead coral blocks as the stalk here because um, this is where the, the oldest part of the colony would be. This is where the colony would have first formed. And then as it's gotten bigger and bigger and started to spread out, um, it would have shaded out this earlier part of the colony and that would mean that polyps wouldn't really want to keep moving in here because they can't get sunlight. Instead they'd start to form almost like this umbrella shape here. We've got this tube shaped one here and these are actually more the shape that sponges would take but I like the, the kind of chimney shape here. Um, I like the idea of putting maybe soul sand or magma blocks up here so you get like bubbles that come out of them. Um, so we've got these kind of tube shaped ones. You can also get these plate-like corals, and sometimes they'll again have this stalk where the colony of polyps would have first started forming. And then as they spread out, as they get wider, they want to reach up and catch that sunlight. Um, you wouldn't get polyps that keep growing down here because they're shaded. So again, I've used the dead coral blocks down there. Not You don't have to, but I, I've done it here. And again, and they spread out to catch that sunlight. The plate-like corals can also kind of fold in on themselves, and this is the shape that I found the most difficult to kind of replicate uh, in the game. But you can see here I've got these sort of different heights that I've kind of curled up around themselves. Um, and again, this is where these different polyps, they want to reach up for sunlight, so the sunniest bits are going to be the tops of the blocks, and the shadier bits are going to be down below. So you'll find that these bits, these polyps will do better, they'll kind of grow faster, um, and so these bits will tend to grow taller and taller, and the shaded bits in between, they'll tend to stay a little bit shorter because, again, they can't get so much sunlight, so they don't grow as well. So plate-like corals can also take these flat shelf-like shapes, and when I was building these, what I was trying to remember is, again, that these polyps, they've got that algae inside them, the zooxanthellae, and so they want sunlight. So the lower plates, they should stick out a little bit past the upper ones and that's again to allow the polyps to catch that sunlight and it gives it a more interesting shape if they're staggered a little bit rather than all stacked immediately one on top of the other. Over here I've got some more of these um, kind of like branching corals but you can see what I've done is I've had them sort of anchored to the base here but then they stretch out and up over this deep part of the water. I've not put any coral down here in the deeper area, and that's again because um, downwards a bit deeper, it gets darker because water slowly filters out sunlight. So it's much harder for coral to grow in deeper waters. But what they will want to do, these corals here, is they want to capture currents that come up from the deep water. Because if you imagine all of these different sea creatures here, they're eating, going about their business, and their crumbs, the little bits of leftover food that they don't manage to eat, they'll slowly sink down to the bottom. And also, all of their poo will slowly sink down to the bottom. So cold, deep water also has lots of nutrients in it, lots of this little particles of food. And you'll get these currents that move through the deep ocean, and when they hit a ridge, the currents are forced up and up and up. And all those extra nutrients 
can help plankton to grow really, really quickly, really, really well. So what you'll often see is these corals that stretch out over these deeper ridges, and that's because they're stretching out to catch all those nutrients that are being swept up by these deep water currents. But it also looks really neat and dramatic, I think. So what do we get when we put all these different shapes together? We get something that looks a little bit like this. Um, so here I've tried to kind of mix and match all those different shapes and species of coral for hopefully what looks like a bit more of an interesting, maybe a little bit more realistic of a coral reef. We've got younger colonies of corals, these little sp spots. We've got bigger corals. I've got corals that grow on top of each other. So here's a massive coral with a plate-like coral that's sort of grown out the side of it and a branching coral that's coming up here. And I think it just makes it uh, a slightly more varied, slightly more realistic coral reef. Now, I'm not a super duper builder, so I would love to see any of the coral reefs that you guys managed to build because I'm sure that you guys can do a lot better than me. I've only just started um, building these. So here we've got our a bit more realistic, a bit more varied coral reef, but of course coral reefs are in danger. They're threatened by lots of different things. Most importantly probably is of course global warming. Now this is causing ocean temperatures to get higher and higher and this is actually really stressful to coral and what it causes the coral to do is to actually get rid of their uh, their partners, their zooxanthellae, those algae inside their bodies. And when they get rid of it, of course, they're left behind with just their translucent bodies. And so they go almost white. They go the color of that limestone. So let's go and see what that looks like in Minecraft. So here we are at a coral reef that has experienced coral bleaching. So again, this is where the ocean temperatures have gotten so high. Those little polyps, they get really stressed out that they might actually eat the algae inside their body or they just kick them out because it's a bit less stressful to, to not have those roommates. Now coral can survive a little while uh, while bleached and eventually if temperatures go back down the coral can actually take in new algae from the water so they can get their little partners back. Uh, but if it goes on too long the reef can actually die. Uh, so here we've got our bleached coral reef. Now as we go through this bleached coral reef, you can see that there's still all those shapes, but everything's gone sort of pale, white, and gray. Some of them are a bit dead here, like this one here doesn't have any little polyps anymore. It's a dead little lump. Um, and it goes a bit ghostly, I think. Now it's not all doom and gloom. Coral can, as I said, recover from bleaching. If the water temperatures go down, algae can move back in and the color can come back to the reef. But fortunately, not all corals are as sensitive to water temperature. So how can we show a coral reef that's starting to recover? Well, I've got a few building materials here, so let's have a look. Uh, what you might want to do is dot around a few of the, the base corals to kind of show that some of the polyps are starting to take back in their, their algae partners here. So they're starting to get their color back. You might want to also show colonies starting to reform, so maybe Put a few small blocks there with some polyps on top there. And that's to show that these new coral polyps, you know, they're starting to land back down in this area and, and resettle, restart their colonies. Now, as I mentioned, the ones that are more resistant to uh, warming temperatures, they tend to be the more massive types. So have a look around in your coral reef for any of the more blocky shaped um, ones that you've built and start by putting the color back in on those first and you'll start to see what a coral reef looks like when it starts to recover. So here's our coral reef that's starting to recover. It's still a bit gloomy but there's some little splashes of color in there to give us a bit of hope that this reef is going to recover. But you can imagine that you know this coral reef is probably not going to come back exactly the same will probably lose a lot of these tall branching corals and that's going to really change the reef. It's going to make it a really different habitat for all those fish that depend on the coral and it's also going to change how the corals affect the environment around it because coral reefs 
if you look at how these corals they get so close to the surface they do a really important job of taking energy out of waves so they reduce erosion of our beaches and of our shorelines and also coral is what makes up a lot of that beautiful white sand so if you've ever gone somewhere on holiday like maybe Australia and you look at the beaches and that beautiful white sand a lot of that is actually bits of coral and so if you imagine that a lot of that coral goes if it dies off because of these coral bleaching events then we'll just have less coral and less of this fine branching coral and that means probably we'll have a lot less of that fine white sand as well. So I hope this video has given you guys some ideas for how to build more realistic coral reefs in your Minecraft world. Uh, stay tuned because we plan on releasing more videos about the biology of all these Minecraft creatures. Uh, but for now, from the turtles and from myself, goodbye.